Merry Christmas. I hope everybody is doing well. I hope everybody is settled in uh, to their Christmas morning. Uh, by that, I mean uh, by, by Thanksgiving, uh, thankful, um, giving God honor and glory and praise for today. Not just a day of gifts or excitement um, or, or not just family, uh, but a day that we can just slow down and recognize God uh, in everything. Um, I want to take a moment just for a second, just for y'all in the chat. I want to give you just 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 a, just a moment in the chat, man. If you could just love on each other in the chat, just welcome. Man. And I know y'all doing it already. I know y'all saying good morning. Merry Christmas, everybody. But take a moment just to be intentional. Find somebody in the chat just to wave at tag somebody uh, in there and just say, hey, you know, hope you're doing well. Hey, bro, I'm praying for you. Hey, sis, good to see you today. Take a moment, love on each other in the chat as we normally would in the building, but we're virtual right now. So just take a brief moment just to love on each other in the chat. And when we come back, make sure you got your Bibles because we are ready. I'm ready to fire off this word this morning.
more proclaim His power and glory. Yeah. more voices on night divine no night when Christ was born oh night divine Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Listen, if you are ready for the word, I want you to drop something in the chat. Let us know something that reflects your expectation and your readiness to receive today. I'm ready to fire off what I believe that God has given me this beautiful Christmas morning. Wherever you are, grab your Bibles, grab your notes, gather your family around and get ready for a word that I know is going to speak to your spiritual womb. That's my assignment this morning to speak past your flesh, past your feelings, past your emotions, past your thoughts, uh, past what, what's happening and going on in the natural. And I need to speak to your spiritual womb. Y'all, listen, perk up your spiritual antennas and put on your spiritual ears this morning um, because I want to declare some things over your life. Turn with me to Luke chapter one. <clears throat> Luke chapter one. Um, what may seem like uh, a Christmas day morning uh, message. Y'all know me by by now. Uh, we, we're not just uh, preaching no Christmas morning message just because it's Christmas morning. Um, yes, this is the story about the birth of Jesus, um, but there's some things that God is trying to show us in the spirit, and I know it just like I know my name. Um, and so y'all 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 get ready for this. I need to speak to your spiritual womb this morning. I know some of y'all already ready for this. I don't even have to dig into it yet. I know y'all already ready. Hurry up and get there. Luke chapter one. Luke chapter one. This is what it says. I'm going to read through it <clears throat> and then we're going to comb through it this morning. This is what it says in Luke chapter one, verse 26. It says, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, highly favored one. And the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Follow me. But when she saw him, she was troubled. 
she was afraid. Anybody who's been keeping up with the ministry and we see she's been afraid, you know, something fire is about to come after this. And that is saying, consider what manner the, uh, greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. We'll come back to that part right there. And behold, you will conceive. Somebody say conceive. We're going to come back to that. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom. There will be no end. Then Mary said, this is her response to everything. She said to the angel, how can this be? Since I do not know a man. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Y'all just stay with me. Two more verses. Then Mary said in verse 38, behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed. This is the last verse right here in verse 45. And this is what stirred me up. It says, blessed is she who believed for there will be fulfillment of those things which were told to her from the Lord. Father, I thank you for this word this morning. I thank you that you desire to speak to the spiritual wombs of every listener under the sound of my voice. I thank you that their spiritual baby will leap this morning. I thank you that their spirit man will be stirred up from the inside out. Father, I thank you that there is something on the inside of them that they are carrying that you desire to bring to pass. Something that they've been believing for, expecting for, but today they will conceive and it will come forth. Father, I thank you that you'll speak to us today. Declare your word over us today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Watch this. It says, blessed is he who believe, blessed is she who believe, and there will be fulfillment of those things which were told to her. I know this seems like a typical story, but this ain't going to be no typical message. Um, listen to me. We're going to dive right in. I don't even need an introduction to this message. Oftentimes we ask ourselves, we say, <clears throat> Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? And we ask all these questions. Mary, did you know he would be the Prince of Peace? Did you know that he would raise people from the dead? Did you know that he would deliver people? Did you know that he would bring salvation to the world? And we look at Mary and we ask her all of these questions. But when's the last time that you look within yourself? What, what, what has God put on the inside of you? What is God trying to conceive and bring forth out of your spiritual womb? What has God put on the inside of you? Do you know what God has put on the inside of you? Do you know what you have conceived? Do you know what you're believing for, what you're expecting? Do you know the magnitude of it? Do you know the gravity, the weight of the anointing that God has placed on your life? Do you know what you're carrying? Do you know? Do you have any idea of what God has put on the inside of you? And are you walking heavy in it? Right. And you might say, well, you know, yeah, you're not carrying Jesus physically in your body. Maybe you're not even physically pregnant right now, but you are a carrier of the glory of God. You're a carrier of the presence of God. You're a carrier of the Holy Spirit. You are a carrier of his anointing, his yoke destroying, his yoke breaking anointing. What you have on the inside of you is the answer to all of your problems. Oh, my God. Are y'all hearing me today? <laughs> what you have on the inside of you is the answer, is the solution to all of your problems. They were believing for salvation. They were believing for a savior. They were believing for somebody to show up and to and to redeem them and to restore them. And everything that they were believing for, everything that they were expecting, everything that they were crying out to God for, he had put in her. Do you know what God put on the inside of you? The questions that you have, the things that worry you, the things that cause fear to come over you, the things that cause you to shrink back, 
the things that you are searching for answers for, uh, the things that you're looking for, the unspoken request. Do you know what God has put on the inside of you? No, I'm not letting you off the hook this morning. I need to speak to your spiritual womb. This ain't no typical Christmas Day message. Hallelujah. I need to speak to your spiritual womb. What has God put on the inside of you? They were believing for a savior. So why is it that what I'm believing God for what we've been in expectation for for so long, we've been believing for a savior. We've been believing for somebody to come and rescue us from the oppression of the empire that we live in. We've been believing for somebody to save us, to bring salvation to the people of God. And now salvation finally comes. And what does it say? What happens to Mary is something similar that happens to us. Once God gets ready to show us, to reveal to us, to conceive, to bring forth everything that we've been believing for. Mary does the same thing that a lot of us do. It says right here in verse 29, it says, but when she saw him, talking about the angel, she was troubled. Nah, Pastor Ty, that ain't me. I'm, I'm, I'm not troubled. I'm not, I'm not afraid when God reveals to me what he wants me, wants me to do. I'm not afraid. I'm not troubled when, 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 when God shows me my purpose, when he shows me my calling, when he shows me my anointing, when he shows me the spiritual baby that I'm carrying. Let's keep going. It says in verse 30, then the angel said to her, do not be afraid. <laughs> you already know where I'm going with this because everybody who follows us, you know, anytime we see do not be afraid, it means you need to take off your natural ears. Because if you hear this with your natural ears, you're going to have a tendency to fear. But if you hear this in the spirit, you'll look past what you naturally feel, right? And you'll be able to hear what God is trying to get to you in the spirit. He says, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Again, why would Mary be afraid that she's found favor? Even before he says, do not be afraid in verse 28, he says, rejoice, highly favored one. He says, blessed are you among women. He says, you're blessed. He says, you're highly favored. He says, again, he says, do not be afraid because you have found favor with God. Now, why would that cause me to fear? Why would that cause me to be afraid? Why would why would that cause me to shrink back when I know that I have favor, when I know that I am blessed, when I know that the hand of God is on my life? Let me answer you. The reason that Mary was afraid is the same reason that some of us are afraid. Because when we are looking our purpose face to face, when we when we begin to come to grips with what we are anointed to do, when we meet who we really are in the spirit and beyond just what we do as an occupation, when we're introduced to our vocation instead of just what we do on a job from nine to five, then it has a tendency to scare us. You know why we're afraid of our spiritual womb? You know why we're afraid of our anointing? You know why we're afraid of our calling? Because to whom much is given. Yep, some of y'all finishing even before I even say it. Much is required. To whom much is given, much is also required. So I'm sure Mary understands, man, this is what we've been believing for. We've been praying for a savior. We've been praying for salvation. We've been praying for redemption. We've been praying for deliverance. We've been praying for peace. We've been praying for rescue. And now everything that I've been praying for, not only is God willing to do it, but the thing that freaks me out is that he wants to do it through me. Who am I talking to this morning? With things that you've been praying for, yeah, you've been wanting it, but now that God shows you that he's going to do it through you, now it becomes a different ball game. Now it's a different prayer. Wait, 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 wait a minute, God, I didn't ask for this. Yeah, I wanted you to do it, but I didn't know you were going to do it through me. Yeah, I wanted to see a group chat where, where people are praying for each other, but I, I didn't know I would be the one to start it. Yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted to see a prayer group happen on my job, but I didn't know that I was going to be the one to initiate it. Yeah, I wanted to see a business in my city that promotes Christian businesses. Yeah, I want to see it. I'd be part of it if somebody else did it. But I didn't know that you would do it through me. I wanted to see something happening at the school where they bring parents together. I wanted to see a group where they bring single fathers together. I wanted to see a group where you have parents who are expecting. I want to see it happen, but I didn't know you would do it through me. I want to see my family delivered, but I didn't know that you would use me to do it. 
I want to see restoration with somebody that I've fallen apart with, but I didn't know that you'd use me to be the person to mend it. I didn't know that I would be the person to apologize that would restore what has been lost. I didn't know that I would be the builder of the bridge that would bring restoration to a bridge that I burned. It's a different ball game. Fear comes over you when you're introduced to who you really are. Yeah, there's no need to fear when you're just working a job, when you're working a nine to five, when you're just going in for money, when you have no purpose, when you don't know your calling, when you know your natural name better than you know your spiritual name. No fear comes over you. Satan doesn't care if you're not living on purpose. There will be no spiritual attacks if you're not living on purpose. <clears throat> but he says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Highly favored one. This is what he says in verse 31. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Satan don't care about you if you ain't living on purpose. The reason why some of you are experiencing some of those attacks is because he's after your womb even before you conceive. Y'all, I'm saying some stuff in the spirit that I think y'all probably only going to catch if you catch this in the spirit. <clears throat> when Jesus was born, if you go back and you read through Matthew, and I believe this is going to help a whole lot of people. Um, when, 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 when Jesus was born, Herod knew it had been prophesied that the Savior would come by way of the city. He already knew that salvation was coming. And the word of God says that um, uh, that because of the prophecies uh, that Herod, that that he became angry, that he was looking to kill Jesus, that even all of Jerusalem gathered around with him in this, wanting to do away with the coming salvation. They were after Mary even before Jesus could do his job. Even before your anointing has matured, even before your spiritual gifts have come to surface, Satan is already out to take you out. This is another point I believe is going to help a whole lot of people. Don't expect everybody around the holiday season to be all cheerful and joyful like you. Yes, this is a time of thanksgiving. Yes, this is a time of joy, a time of family, um, um, a time uh, of happiness, of, of excitement, um, a time where people come together, where, a time of cheer. The holiday season, the most wonderful time of the year. Don't be surprised when everybody's not excited and not as excited as you about the holiday season. Because on the first Noel, the first Christmas, when Jesus was around one year, when he was a, when he turned one. That Herod sent people to give him gifts. Um, but then he said, come back to me, bring word back to me and let me know how it's going. But it was really a setup because say, uh, because Herod wanted to come and kill Jesus. Right. And since he could not find Jesus, what he ended up doing was mass killing a mass genocide of all of the children, all of the babies who was two years old and under. Well, since I can't find him, I'm gonna just take out everybody. Since I can't locate who the deliverer is, I'm gonna just take out everybody. Um, and, and if Satan can't identify exactly what your gift is, then I'll just wreck your entire life so that you'll never even want to discover who you really are. I'll just shake up things around you so that what's on the inside of you will never come to be. You have people who have lost loved ones during this time of year. And so now the, the most wonderful time of year is now the saddest time of year. You have people who this is a reminder of what happened last year, of what happened years ago. Can you imagine the people who lost their child around the time that Jesus was born? I'm pretty sure that they weren't too excited about Jesus's birthday. I'm pretty sure they weren't too excited uh, when, when, when Jesus started to grow and mature. I'm pretty sure every single birthday he had after that point, that it was a reminder that their child should be that same age, that their child had an opportunity also uh, to, to, to do the things that they have been created to do. This is a time where we need to be sensitive to what people are going through, where we need to be sensitive 
to pray for and, and not just cancel people or write them off as a Scrooge. But what is it about you that makes you think and feel the way that you feel? Maybe I should take time to sit with you to figure out what's going on in your heart. What's going on in your mind? How can I help you? How can I pray for you? Satan comes after Mary and tries to destroy Jesus, tries to destroy what she has conceived even before it manifests, even before he reaches his full potential. says, behold, you will conceive in verse 31, your womb will bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Listen, I'm almost done, y'all. She, he, he said, the angel said to her, he said, don't, don't be afraid. You're favored, right? Um, and I know that this is going to scare you what I'm about to say, but I'm kind of giving you a heads up before I say it so that you'll know that the assignment I'm about to give you, whoa, listen to what I'm about to say. I know when I know when the angel says it, he's given her a preface. He's saying, hey, I know you might be afraid when I say this, because what I'm about to say, it holds so much weight. It's so heavy. You won't be able to hear this with your natural ears. You need to be able to hear this with your spirit. But when I say it, I'm giving you a heads up. No, don't fear, because everything that I'm about to give you, the assignment that I'm about to release over your life, I have already predestined it. I have already written it out. I have already given it a name. You shall call his name Jesus even before he's conceived, even before he is born, even before he lives one day, even before he does a miracle. I am already giving it a name as confirmation that what the assignment I'm about to give you, I've already I already have an expected end for it. So you won't be responsible for making sure this thing happens. You won't be responsible for sustaining, but you will be responsible for protecting it. God, y'all, this is good. You won't be responsible for sustaining it. It'll be self-sustaining. He is the prince of peace. You won't have to give him peace. He will be a savior. You won't have to save him. He will be a protector of the world. You won't have to, 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 to be able to, to chase him around and make sure he's okay. This, this will, will call him wonderful, counselor, prince of peace, mighty God. He is the savior of the world, that God is not expecting us to sustain what he has started, but he does expect us to protect it. I know it weighs heavy on us because you have to protect your anointing. You have to protect your spiritual gifts. Even as a mother, when she's pregnant, she says, I'm expecting you. You can't let everybody touch your stomach. You can't let everybody pray and pronounce blessings over that child because you don't know what they're speaking over them. You don't know what my child was created to do. You don't know the purpose that they were called to and what you're praying over them. You might be praying on them and not over them. Woo, y'all listen to what I'm saying. There are people praying over you and not praying for you. There are people that don't have your best interests in mind because they don't know what God has put on the inside of you. So they have their their best interest at heart. And so what they pray for you has to benefit them. But what benefits them may not benefit what you're carrying. So when you're pregnant, you got to protect it. You got to watch over it. You got to secure it. You got to make sure that this thing I'll be able to carry it to full term. I got to watch what I eat. Oh, God, y'all hear y'all got to hear this in the spirit, man. I'm speaking to your spiritual womb. When you're pregnant, you, you, you eat different. I, I ain't never been pregnant before. I'm talking about what I know from my wife. I'm just talking about what she's told me, what I've seen with my eyes. So y'all don't beat me up on this. I've never experienced it. But I've, from what I've seen with my personal experience, it, it, it changes how you eat. It changes where you go. It changes your sleep pattern. It, 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 it changes um, it changes your schedule. Right. Sometimes it may be an inconvenience, but it's for the best. Right. Um, it, it changes what you listen to, how you feed yourself. It changes your expectation. It changes your routine. It changes your preparation. It changes how you plan. A baby changes everything. That when you're a carrier, when you're a carrier of God's anointing, when you're a carrier of a spiritual gift, when you have something on the inside of you that God is trying to bring forth, that is something you got to protect. You have to protect your anointing. That you can't take this thing any, any, just anywhere around anybody. You can't allow everybody to have access to your spiritual baby. I mean, I'm saying a lot. It says in verse 31, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to declare over you today. Yeah, this is for you. I want to declare over you today that what you have been expecting, that you will also conceive. That what you will conceive, that you will also bring forth. That you will carry this baby full term. That it will not, come on y'all, that it will not be aborted. That it will not be lost. I know that, make, that God has probably made you some promises in the past that you've probably not seen come to pass yet. And so for me to tell you, yes, you will conceive, you will carry full term, it, you will bring it forth, it will spring forth, that this, that this spiritual baby will come to pass. I know for you sometimes it's hard to hear that because you've heard it before. You've seen it before. You've carried before and you didn't see manifestation. You've heard prophecies before and it didn't come to pass. You've had dreams um, that have fallen by the wayside. You've had visions that you have not seen happen. But I'm speaking over you and I'm declaring it today that what you are expecting, you will conceive what you will, what you are conceiving. It will come to pass. It will come forth. Hallelujah. And I believe it. Somebody say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that we will see it come to pass. No more spiritual abortions. Hallelujah. That you won't give up on what God has put on the inside of you. That you won't shrink back from, from walking heavy in the anointing. That the spirit of God that lived in Jesus is the same spirit that rests, that rules, that resides on the inside of us. That yoke-breaking power and anointing lives on the inside of you. You are a carrier of his spirit. You are a carrier of his anointing. You are a carrier of, the, of a curse-breaking uh, power that dwells and that lives on the inside of you you carry it you walk around with it it goes with you everywhere that you go you don't put this thing down and put on something else when you leave out the door you don't put this thing down when you go to work you don't put this thing down when you go to a Christmas party or a Christmas gathering we don't put this down when we go to class we, we carry this everywhere that we go every room that you walk in you're a carrier of his glory Every space that you walk in, you are a carrier of his spirit. Everywhere, everywhere you go, there is potential for a curse, for a demon, for something to be broken and to be shed off of somebody's life because you are a carrier of the spirit of God. What are you carrying? What are you carrying? Do you even know what you're carrying? And he tells Mary, he gives it a name. He said, you'll call him Jesus. That'll be a savior. I'm giving you a heads up of what you're carrying so you already know how to handle it. What are you carrying? Because to whom much is given, much is required. I'll say this last thing, that the, that the opposite is also true. That to whom much is required, much is also given. You are graced for this. You are graced for this that God has distributed your gift well before you were even conceived or wrought in your mother's womb before you even live one day as Psalms 139 maps it out that he already had a plan for your life like Jeremiah 29 says thank you Lord that he has called you to the nations as Jeremiah chapter one says, that he knows what he's doing. And my encouragement to you this morning is even though Mary may have sensed a little bit of fear, even though it may have shaken her foundation in her world, she still ends with this in verse 38. It says, then Mary said, behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me. According to your word. Let it be to me according to your word. Why is this important? Because though it may have shaken her foundation. Though she may not have completely known the magnitude of who Jesus was. Of what he would accomplish. As we find out in other verses where she just said she pondered these things in her heart. She kept these things 
in her heart. I'm sure she was gathering information as she was learning. As the wise men came and told her about who Jesus would be and began to prophesy, said she, she, she kept these things in her heart. As she found Jesus in the temple and he said, I have to be about my father's business. She, it just says she pondered these things in her heart. I can imagine that she's just taking note of everything that's happening and she kept it in her heart. She says to the angel, be it unto me according to your word, because I believe, watch this, I believe that whatever you have spoken, it will come to pass. I believe that whatever God you have declared over my life, I will see the fulfillment of it. Who am I talking to this morning? That I believe that whatever, whatever you have established in heaven, that I will also see established in the earth. I believe that all creation has to align itself to your word. So if you have spoken it, then everything around me has to align to make sure that it happens, that I will see what you have spoken in private come to pass in public, that I will see come to fruition what you have declared in the spirit. I will see it come to pass in the natural. Just like naturally a mother will say, I'm expecting, I'm expecting, I'm expecting. She doesn't say I'm thinking. She doesn't say I thought. She doesn't say maybe. She doesn't say this is what I'm considering. A mother is with child who has conceived. She says, I'm expecting. Continue, watch this. Continue to make preparation for your expectations. But then also make preparations for conception. Begin to start preparing for what you are conceiving. Yeah, I'm expecting. I'm expecting. But I've also conceived. So what I'm expecting is the fulfillment of the conception. Y'all, gosh. I know y'all got it. I know y'all got it. Y'all deep. I know y'all got it. I know y'all in the spirit. Y'all tuned in this morning. It's Christmas morning. Y'all tuned in. I know y'all got it. I'm expecting that what I have conceived will be fulfilled. That I will carry this thing out full term. And that in due season, we will absolutely see the manifestation of not just the expectations, but also the conception. That what God has put on the inside of you, that he will not rest till it comes to pass. I don't know about y'all, that, that gives me consolation. To know that he is liable, that he is responsible for this baby, this spiritual baby, your spiritual womb, that it is conducive, that it is perfectly suited and prepared to give birth to what God has put on the inside of you. I want to pray over you this morning. Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you that you have spoken to us today. That we are not just in expectation for our preparation, that we are not just making preparation for our expectations. But that we are also preparing for conception. God, I thank you that our spiritual womb is filled with your glory. And that we will see every promise come to pass that you who promised are also faithful to fulfill. Father, I pray over this morning, anybody who may be grieving, who they find themselves in a position as some of those who may be lost their child around the same time that Jesus was born. And this time of year is a reminder of the hurt and the pain that they've experienced. Father, I thank you. I thank you that your son came into the world as the Prince of Peace. God, that you would also because the spirit of the living God lives on the inside of us by way of your Holy Spirit. I thank you that we are carriers of your peace, that your peace would exude from the inside out. Father, that it would pour out of our pores a peace that surpasses all understanding, a peace that doesn't even make sense. That it doesn't make sense that I could have this type of joy in spite of everything that's going on. It doesn't make sense that I can have this kind of peace 
in spite of the news that I've gotten. It doesn't make sense that I can have peace, even though that this is a time for family, but I feel isolated and I feel alone. Father, I thank you for your peace. I thank you that you're with us. Emmanuel, the Bible says that, that his name will be Jesus, that he will be called Emmanuel, God with us. Father, I thank you that you're with us. And each person under the sound of my voice, you know where they are, whether they're in their homes, whether they're journeying on the road, whether they're laying in their beds, whether they're with family, whether they're listening by themselves, whether this is playing in the background as white noise, but at this moment they have, they've chosen to turn up the volume so that they can hear your voice speaking. Father, I thank you that your Holy Spirit will meet them where they are right now. In this moment, in this time, that your Holy Spirit would wrap his arms around them, that your ministering angels would declare healing, restoration, redemption, encouragement, that the glory of the Lord would fill up their space even now. Yeah, I know some of you feel the presence of God heavy where you are. I know it by the Spirit. This is an opportunity for you to say, Lord, be it unto me according to your word. Whatever you're conceiving in us in this moment, right now, God might be planting something on the inside of you that may not conceive today, but that will come forth in this coming season. Let your response be, be it unto me according to your word. Somebody put that in the chat. Be it unto me according to your word. Lord, be it unto me according to your word. Thank you, Lord, for declaring your word over us today. And what better day than, than today that we celebrate the birth of Christ, that we acknowledge the birth of a Savior, salvation, redemption, restoration, freedom, liberation, deliverance. What better day than today to be able to receive him? There's anybody under the sound of my voice, you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, exactly what he came to do for the world, and you want to receive him. I'd like to pray with you this morning, prayer of salvation, just simply that you believe that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that you confess your sins before him, your shortcomings, and that you would receive him into your heart so that the Holy Spirit can be conceived in you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, if you're if you're streaming this morning and, and you want to recommit your life to Christ Jesus, man, I'd love to pray with you this morning. This would be a great day to do it. Even before the new year. Now we ain't we ain't we ain't looking forward to no no New Year's resolutions. A great time for me to start over. Let's start now. Let's refresh now. There's no time better than the present. It's a gift. A gift that you have right now. Who knows if 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 we'll even be here in the new year. Life is short. Choose them today to recommit yourself. God, today, Christmas morning, the gift that I'm giving you on your birthday is me. Man, that's good. The gift I'm giving you is me. Thank you, Lord. If there's anybody, you say, man, I'm looking for a church home. I'm looking for a pastor. I want to be part of this flowing life family. Man, y'all are family. Pastor Ty, Lady Taryn, y'all are my pastors. Y'all have just been my internet pastors. Y'all have just been my 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 uh, my my virtual pastors from afar. Um, but I want to make it official. I want to be part of this family. Whether you live in Charlotte or not, this is my family. Put it in the chat. Any of those invitations, I want you to drop it in the chat so that we can pray for you, so that we can acknowledge you, um, so that we can rejoice with you. Any of those invitations, I love it. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> we got people in the chat. If there's any other, actually, if there's any other prayer requests, anything I didn't mention, and you're on the stream this morning and you say, Pastor Ty, I just need prayer. I just want my, somebody to stand in agreement with me. Um, I just need somebody to believe God with me. I just need some prayer warriors, <laughs> some people full of faith 
that 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 what I'm believing for, if it pertains to the will of God for my life, I just need some people to jump in with me, some people to fight with me, some people to war with me. We got people on this stream this morning that are more than willing. They might even drop. They might even reply to your message in the chat this morning to let you know that we're standing with you. We're believing God with you. We're fighting for you. You can drop it in the chat and we'd love to pray for you as well. Thank you, God. Thank God for this opportunity. Um, Y'all, please take take a moment today uh, just to slow down, just to be thankful, um, whether you're with family, um, whether it is just you and the Holy Spirit and Jesus and God, you and the, <laughs> you and the Trinity, y'all four just kicking it. Um, wherever you find yourself, be thankful. Be thankful. A lot of people didn't make it Christmas 2022. Um, but I just thank God, um, you know, that we're here, um, that we have breath in our lungs. Um, not that we are just content with just making it because y'all, 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 y'all know we, we, we still got to live on purpose, but sometimes it's good just to take inventory, just to count your blessings, um, and see how good God has been. We're not waiting to the end of the year to recap on how good God has been, man. Every day, you know, we should be able to get Thanksgiving. Um, and like I said before, man, today is, today is Jesus birthday. Uh, I know, you know, some of us sometimes we pass out gifts, everybody get gifts on Jesus birthday. Um, but it's like, man, going to somebody's birthday party and then expecting them to give you a gift, going to somebody else's birthday party, expecting them to give you a birthday cake. Right. Um, today is Jesus's birthday. And so today, uh, we are giving him us God, you can have us today. Um, I even challenge you, man, to search yourself. God, what is it that you want from me today? What do you desire? What do you want to see? What do you want from me? God, because whatever you want, there's no price tag too high. Um, there's nothing too deep, nothing too far, nothing, nothing that that's uh, that's beyond what I'm able and capable to give. I want to give it. And I'm willing to give that to you today, Lord. So I challenge you guys to do that as well. Um, I thank you guys for streaming this morning, for taking time uh, from your families uh, to be able to share with us this beautiful Christmas morning. Um, I'm excited about what God is doing in our lives, what God is doing in your life. Um, and the things that are to come in all of our lives. Um, and I, I, I just I look forward not just to the new year because it's a new year, um, but I know um, and we've not shared a lot of things coming out of the pipeline. But I know so many things um, that are in the works and things that are shifting and changing and growing and we're getting better um, and we're being elevated. So many things that are happening um, that I know, man, th this and it's been prophesied even a few weeks ago that we're getting ready to enter in one of the best seasons of our lives. I don't know about y'all, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. And I know that you guys are too. Um, listen, before we finish the stream today, um, I always want to give us an opportunity um, to give, uh, to be a blessing to the ministry um, and everything that we stand for. Um, so if you'd like to give, the information is on the screen um, to sow and be a blessing. I can say confidently that this ministry is good ground, is great ground um, to sow into. Um, as you guys are preparing um, and as you guys are, are, are giving um, and or maybe some of you even considering, um, I'll share this as well. Um, this 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 holiday season and not just this holiday season, but specifically the last couple months or so, we the, the ministry has been able to release multiple seeds um, that we have not shared publicly. But I told you guys a few weeks ago, um, you know, one thing that my father shared with me some years ago is that. You don't do it to be seen, but sometimes you need to be seen doing it. Um, and I think sometimes uh, our ministry has been humble almost to a fault um, because we have not shared um, the many ways that we have been a blessing to different people or the community um, to the extent that if you don't see it, you don't know that we do it. And if you don't know that we do it, then you, you may not be uh, compelled to sow into what we're doing. Um, I found out that a lot of people, they want to know what we're doing because they don't want to be left out. They want to get seed in the ground. <laughs> uh, man, y'all, y'all don't play about sowing. Um, y'all, y'all want to know what we're doing so that your seed can be intentional. And many of you lately, as we have been sharing uh, the different areas that we've been sowing into, y'all been labeling y'all seeds. Um, and so I want to share a couple of those things just really briefly. Um, just um, uh, just yesterday, we were able to sow into a family from Ashley Park. Uh, elementary, um, the same uh, school that we were able to do Harvest Fest uh, with on their grounds, who were looking forward to, do, to partnering with even more. Um, they had a family that was in need um, of a lot of help, um, a grandmother um, with a few children that she, um, um, that she has under her care, um, that were in need of uh, winter clothes, of coats, 
um, and different things for the house um, and even food for that matter. Um, and it doesn't matter who it is. And we're not about to disclose any names or anything of that nature either. Um, but we were able to be a blessing uh, to them yesterday um, with gift cards to be able to go out and get all the necessary items um, that they need right now. Um, we also um, are being a blessing to uh, Johnson C. Smith, um, an HBCU college student um, who is in need of a laptop um, and actually had the opportunity to talk to him um, and, and, and speak to him um, about his situation and, and, and has a laptop and is not working properly, is really, really slow and, and has a lot of challenges with working with it. And so we want to be a blessing um, because those are one of the schools that we've been partnering with. Um, as of lately as well. Not to mention all of the outreaches that we have done throughout the year on the college campus or with the middle school kids or the elementary school kids, um, the Harvest Fest or any of the other things that we have done. Um, but individuals, any of you who are connected to the ministry have been connected for any time frame, you know that we pour back into the members as well. Um, and so I'm, I'm sure many of you, many of you, uh, many, many, many of you um, know how much the ministry sows even into individuals um, and those things obviously we don't we don't share names either um, but we share these things with you so that you can be intentional about your seat you guys are labeling your seats y'all dropping them in there y'all saying hey send this towards the college student y'all putting a note in there like hey send this toward the family at ashley park hey make a note i'm believing god to be married one day so i'm sowing into the marriage ministry um, I'm believing God for kids, so I'm sowing into the children's ministry. Um, Pastor Ty, Lady Taryn, I'm believing in God for a godly marriage or for a godly family like yours. I'm sowing in, uh, you know, to our pastors. Uh, y'all, y'all, man, seeds have been flying around all over the place within the ministry because y'all got it. You understand. You understand it. You got it. In this whole series of digging ditches, you're making preparation for what you're expecting. So whatever you're believing God for, man, take an opportunity to sow into it. Find somebody who's doing what you're doing or what you're expecting and say, man, I need to put seed in the ground because I'm believing to be there one day. Right. Whatever you sow into, I believe that God is able to honor and to propel you into it. <clears throat> man, you can't have what you don't respect. <laughs> um, man, this is just y'all. Y'all. Y'all don't play when it comes to sowing. I, I know that about y'all. So we always want to give you opportunities to sow and be intentional about that. Let's pray over our giving. Father, I thank you for all those who have to give. All those who desire to give, I thank you that the seed that we have is the least that it will ever be. The seed that we hold in our hand is the least that it will ever be. And as we release it in the good ground, I thank you that a harvest will spring up in due season. Press down, shaken together and runneth over that men will give into our bosom. Father, I thank you that your word says that we give and it shall be given. Help us to just focus on the giving part, our generosity. For God so loved the world that he gave. And we believe that as a result of our generosity, that you will handle the rest of the scripture that says, and it shall be given, pressed down, shaken together and runneth over. I thank you for our seed going into good ground. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Again, I thank all of you guys for streaming this morning. I know that y'all are blessed. I know that y'all are encouraged. Um, just really quickly, uh, just as a reminder, um, we will be in the building next Sunday for the 1st of January, New Year's Day. Y'all better come fired up and ready to go. We will see you guys bright and early Sunday morning at 10 a.m. But if you're feeling real good, go ahead and come early at 9 a.m. to set the atmosphere to pray or maybe just to jump around um, and, to, and to prepare yourself for the service because I know it's going to be fire. Um, so we're looking forward to it um, again. Merry Christmas. We love you guys. I love you guys personally. Uh, Merry Christmas from our, our, our family, uh, from my wife, from our children, from Flowing Life. We pray that you guys enjoy um, and a special prayer of protection over all of you guys or any of you guys traveling. Special prayer over any of you guys who are grieving during this time of year. Um, and we believe that God will protect you, keep you and supply his peace and support um, in a way that almost becomes overwhelming. Um, with his goodness. I believe it for you. Um, you guys have a great day. Enjoy the blessings of God, uh, his favor and his goodness. Amen. <laughs>